Oh, greetings, friends, and welcome to Trenton 365 Midweek. I am Jacques Howard, broadcasting from Hub 13, 13 West Front Street in historic downtown Trenton. We are located right next door to the 1911 Smokehouse and a half a block from the old barracks, one of the first and oldest in the state, or excuse me, in the country, if I'm not mistaken. We are also the location for... Trenton Bike Share and Trenton 365 Take My Tour of Trenton. And with that being said, what you can do is you can come to Hub 13 and get a bike in partnership with uh, the Trenton Cycling Revolution, the Boys and Girls Club of Mercer County Bike Exchange, AARP, the Trenton Health Team, of course, the city of Trenton. And with that, you can uh, take a bike and ride around and explore the city of Trenton and check out the different things that are happening here because while you're walking or biking, you get a different perspective of the community, of the landscape, what is here. You have access to some things that you may not have had before. Like if you take advantage of the trails uh, that run through here along the canal, et cetera. So that's a perfect lead in to my two guests. I have Cassidy Bullen and Marissa Volk. Um, they are with DVRPC. They're gonna to explain to you what that acronym is, um, the region that they cover, the details of their jobs, et cetera. I'm gonna take them on this quick journey. We've got a short amount of time, but we're gonna take it on a quick journey. They're going to introduce themselves. They're going to talk about the organization that they belong to and the work that they do and how they got into it. And then we're going to talk about what's happening on the calendar immediately, because this time of the year in this region, uh, there's, there's a lot of activity with trails, opening, um, cleanup days, bike rides, et cetera. So with that being said, I'm going to bring both of them online, and I'm going to ask Cassidy to start first. Cassidy, introduce yourself and share a bit about, like I said, who you are, what brought you into this industry, et cetera. Sure. Thanks for having us. Um like Jock said, I'm Cassidy Bolin. I am the Associate Manager of the Office of Transit, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Planning at DVRPC, which is the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission. We are a bi-state agency that works at the regional level to uh, plan transportation, um, plan our investments in transportation, and making sure that we're really coordinating um, where our office is located in Philadelphia, and then we cover Philadelphia County, four suburban counties in um, Pennsylvania, and then four suburban counties in New Jersey, importantly, including Mercer County and Trenton. Um, I've been at DVRPC for, gosh, almost 13 years. I've been doing various projects in Trenton for not quite that long, but we have to be coming up in almost a decade um working with the planning folks and Anthony and you know I'm sure a lot of folks that people have seen around and know uh and then we'll get into our latest project but first I'll turn it over to Marissa to introduce herself awesome well done great transition Marissa you're going to take this solo go ahead Thanks so much. Um, I'm Marissa Volk. I work uh, under Cassidy, so I'm also in the Office of Transit, Bike, and Pedestrian Planning at DVRPC. Um, I started in November, so I'm definitely newer to Trenton, but I've jumped right in with our latest project, um, which is the Trenton Bicycle Plan. Um, and so what the Trenton Bicycle Plan entails is looking at Trenton streets to figure out where bike lanes or bike facilities could be added so that the streets in Trenton serve all people who live in Trenton, not just people with cars who live in Trenton. Um, and so this, this effort is kind of to map which streets um, are best suited to fit bike lanes. What would that look like? How do the streets need to change so that bicyclists can feel safe or people who want to bicycle can start doing that and feel safe um, yeah, Cassidy or Jock, did you want to add anything to that? I just, uh, wanted to introduce, jump right in. Well, I'll tell you what, yeah, I, I, think I, I, I want to say, first of all, I really appreciate how you guys did that. That was awesome. Um, Cassidy, I'm thinking back over the years. I think when you first came to Trenton, I was probably one of the first, um, community groups that you probably met with early on. So thank you so much for your commitment. Um, thank you that you've been able to sustain yourself in this industry during some very, very tough times. Um, and in <laughs> fact, I think that we probably had a conversation about that. Like you may have been one of those folks that made the cut 
you know, you know what I mean? In your office, if I remember. And um, yeah, I did okay. start in the recession or at the end of the recession. I graduated grad school in 2010. So not the best time to be entering the job market. But you're right. I think, Jack, that we've been connected on LinkedIn for about a decade. So we must have had some conversation way back when. And um, yeah, have just kind of been orbiting around each other in various ways since then. <laughs> awesome. So so can you share both of you just share equally, um, you know, what how did you get to this point? Like, because as I said, as I said in the in the layup, um, we there's a lot of folks who don't even know that opportunities like yours exist, that you can have a position and a career in an industry that focuses on transportation for bikes and for walking and pedestrian access. So any of you want to jump in? Yeah, and that can really look different ways. You know, that can be someone who's a full-time advocate doing something more, you know, kind of in the range of what you do. That can be an elected official. That can be a great way to advocate and work on transportation. Or it can be something like what Marissa and I do, which is being a transportation planner. Um, so my personal interest, I actually grew up in the Detroit area. So I do often say, and I know that these aren't exact parallels, but Trenton and Detroit do have some things in common. Um, and Detroit is definitely known as being a place where uh, cars are king or cars are queen. And I think as someone who really cares about sustainability, um, it, it really, I was really drawn to being able to plan for other modes that aren't just driving. And I think now that I, I live in a place where I can live without a car, which I really value, it's very important to me that I can do that. I think it's just so important that as government, government agencies, we're investing in a system that allows all users, no matter how they get around, to like be able to do that in a very safe and dignified way. You know, it shouldn't, you shouldn't feel like a second class citizen <laughs> just because you're not driving. <laughs> um, and I think that's so important from an affor affordability perspective, um, you know, like I can afford to pay more for my house or, or, you know, can afford to pay for other things because I don't have to pay for a car. And I think that that's, you know, a package of options we should be providing to every person to decide, you know, what they value and therefore what they want to spend their money on. So I feel really strongly in that. And I think this project and a lot of the work I've done in Trenton has kind of been helping the city also um, see through that kind of goal and vision um, for its citizens. Marissa, you want to jump in? Yeah, it's hard to follow that up. But I think um, similarly, I grew up in Florida in a really small town. I think within the last five years, we just got a bus in my hometown. So there was really no way to get around without a car. Um, so I grew up like riding my bike to a lot of places. And I, I lived in a place that had sidewalks, which is really helpful to Cassidy's point of feeling dignified and like you have a space on the street, we did at least have some of that. Um, but yeah, I think later in life when I moved to cities and I really enjoy living in cities, I really got a taste of like all these other ways to get around, like public transit, being able to walk places, live in places that are walkable. Um, and now I, I'm a carless resident. I live in Philadelphia and I bike pretty much everywhere, like on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so that really gave me an interest in like finding where the bike lanes are, where the trails are, where I feel safe. And so that's kind of how I came into this role. Um, I studied architecture in school, so I always had an interest in the built environment, um, but kind of beyond just the buildings themselves. I was really interested in um, how cities work or don't work and how people access services, what it's like to live in those cities. And so I think transportation can really tie all of that together. Like, can you get places? Um, is it environmentally friendly? Like it ties together all these different social issues through the thread of like transportation, which I really enjoy. Fantastic. Thank you all so much for that. Um, I love taking notes and referring back to them later. And this is very helpful. Um, I'd like for us to, we're going to talk about some uh, calendar events that are coming up. But I want to uh, just ask as a question, Philadelphia to me, um, I went to college there. I've always liked how Philadelphia has handled transportation as a pedestrian. 
And I enjoyed SEPTA, mass transportation. Um, maybe it's the grid layout of the city. I don't know what it is. But I, even when I was in college in the 90s, early 90s, it was, I could get around on a bike comfortably or walk around comfortably and know, okay, no, I'm not just going to walk in the street. I'm going to cross at a crosswalk. And, and they were progressive with a lot of things. Shout out to Jane Golden. Um, why is it so difficult to have some of those things implemented in places like Trent? And I say that because most of the time, it's just paint. Anyone want to take that one? <laughs> oh, boy. Um... And this is a disclaimer. This is not Cassidy or Marissa speaking on behalf of DDRPC. This is three friends having a conversation <laughs> that I'm saying, why, when I go to Philly, I yeah. can do this, but I can't do that in my home city. Yeah, and I know when we've talked before, when we've talked to other folks at TCR before, we have a very um, Trenton staff view of their challenges. So I know, you know, I think we're very sympathetic to, you know, what they are dealing with and the challenges that they're dealing with, which I think is different from the experience of living there. I mean, like, why is this crosswalk not repainted? <laughs> um, you know, I think... You know, Trent's had a, a series of unfortunate incidences the last couple of years. You know, I think we could talk about past management. Um, we can talk about current budgets. Um, yeah, a lot of, you know, political instability, let's say, um, that I think has, you know, uh, the places that almost need that most, you know, need good management need good stable strong leadership has have often haven't had that and you know i speak from coming from detroit too that's had similar things where current or former mayors are indicted and stuff like that but i think unfortunately you know even despite staff's be best efforts sometimes that doesn't that kind of hollows out the ability to do basic things so i think it's you know the funding have to point to the funding have to point to staff capacity um and then i think it's what we see across the region which the culture around our transportation system is slowly changing mm. and i think trenton's really done a lot on the policy side of that the last several years um you know most recently with the complete and green streets ordinance that was passed by city council in 2022 um, which I don't think we've had time to really see how that changes um, investments and what those look like, what they're focused on. Um, so hopefully the future is bright. You know, I think you speak highly of Philadelphia. I certainly, at living here, could point out lots of things that I find frustrating um, in terms of investment or maintenance or things like that. So I think, unfortunately, the challenges are 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 many and i think um i guess i'll say really off the record maybe in the past the focus in trenton hasn't always been on the neighborhoods and the residents especially when you have something like the city capital um that you know gets a lot of time and energy so you know focusing maybe on those places instead of uh the average street corner let's say maybe has been a focus in the past where you know hopefully some of that will Will be better distributed going forward. And I want to say thank you so much. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the time. Um, <laughs> I want to say specifically thank you so much for explaining it that way um, because folks need to hear that. They need to know that there's a lot of moving parts. It's not, oh, we're going to throw some paint down here. No, who owns the street? Who's taking oh, the boy, insurance? Yeah. Is there an issue with the traffic light? Is the signal up the code? All those different things play a part, but to get through all of those things, you have to have conversations like what we're doing and the sharing of the information. So I thank you both for doing that. And Cassidy, um, I'd, I'd like for you to lead into some of the things that people can do immediately in, in regards to supporting biking and pedestrian advocacy um, with um, building out a better infrastructure for biking. Can you talk about some of the things that are coming up on the calendar that people can do right now? Yeah, and I think that's a really good question. And I think as, as we're working on this bike plan, we're really thinking about long-term, how do we build that capacity? And I think 
the shorter answer is we'll be pointing people to the trend cycling revolution and saying get involved with those folks. Um, in the more immediate future, though, we have two upcoming events for the bike plan. Um, these will be for the bike plan, but also we'll be having a more a wider lens of various activities going on related to transportation and trends. So we'll be covering traffic safety through the Vision Zero work that's ongoing. And we'll also be talking about the trails plan that's also ongoing. So there'll be opportunity to um, engage with transportation in a couple of different ways at these events. Um, but really what's key for us, um, for our project, is we really want to hear from folks about these trade-offs. So we've really learned how narrow Trenton streets are. Um, there's not a lot of you know, empty space that's easy to reallocate to bicyclists. So it really is going to be a question of, um, you know, can this parking on both sides go to parking just on one side? And then we can fit a bike lane. You know, that is a, a trade-off and we need to hear from the folks who would benefit from the bike lane for stuff like that to move forward. Um, you know, we know parking is often a contentious conversation um, people really value their parking or certain people really value their parking. Um, so we really want to hear from as many folks as possible about what streets um, do have space that can be reallocated for bicyclists, um, what streets people want to ride on, um, you know, what streets is the parking really important because maybe there's a business or a church or, you know, there's handicap parking that's really crucial. We want to be able to know all of that so that we can make recommendations that can be implemented. So much of this is going to have to go in front of city council and we need to be able to demonstrate as a project team, but then also, you know, supported by residents and folks like TCR that these changes are supported by residents. These changes will benefit residents. These changes will benefit residents that most need support because of things like, you know, they don't have a car, they really depend on a bicycle to get around and they need to do that safely. Um, so I think we, we just want to hear from as many folks as possible to have a plan that's uh, as best informed as it can be, but then also that we can demonstrate the support for these changes because they will need demonstrated support to move forward. Fantastic. Marissa, do you want to add to that and I guess maybe you can also mention when the events are yeah so the first event is going to be Tuesday April 25th from 6 to 8 p.m at uh, the Stubblefield Senior Center on Prospect Street uh, the second event will be Sunday May 7th from 1 p.m to 3 p.m um, at Sam Naples Community Center on Chestnut Ave um, Come to both if you want, come to one. Uh, we're gonna be asking pretty much the same questions at each. We just wanna reach as many people as possible. That's why we're hosting two um, in different areas of the city. Um, and I guess I just wanna add that there's a lot we still need to figure out. We, we're gonna present a draft map of a network that is hopefully connecting to all the places that you want and need to go as a Trenton resident, but we really need to hear from everyone in Trenton, uh, did we get it right? What are we missing? Um, how do you feel about these streets? Uh, how do you feel about these bike lanes? Would you feel comfortable in them? So we really are going to take that feedback and come up with final recommendations. And we, we really, really need that local expertise, especially as we mentioned, we're both in Philadelphia and we, we make site visits, but um, it, of course we're not the experts. Um, everybody who lives in Trenton and rides their bike there is the expert. Um, and then last thing I wanna pitch is there's gonna be free food. There's gonna be Mr. Softy, um, also free. There's gonna be free bike tune-ups by TCR. Um, there's gonna be a pop-up bike lane. Um, we're gonna have bikes on site that you can if you don't have a bike, you want to try out a bike lane, you can do that. You can also bring your bike, of course, if you want to get the free bike tune up. Um, we're going to be giving away bikes, also uh, supported by TCR. Um, we're giving away $50 grocery store gift cards. Um, that's all part of a raffle. Um, and we want to hear from you. So that's my pitch. <laughs> Well, I want to tell you that I think that you all nailed so much information in a short amount of time. Um, we've got just about 90 seconds. Um, Cassidy Bullen and Marissa Volk of DVRPC, thank you all 
for your time. Um, all this information will be shared and distributed through the Trenton 365 networks. Thank you all very much. And folks, with that being said, we've been talking about this for years. Um, there's a large percentage of people in the city of Trenton who do not have a driver's license, um, who do not own a car, depend on public transportation or some other means of transportation. Biking and walking and rolling of all types are taking place. Here at Hope 13, 13 West Front Street in historic downtown Trenton, we're one of the Trenton bike share locations, but I'm going to make a pitch that DVRPC come here and do a presentation to the folks who come through here and explain to them the work that, that you're doing, have them take a survey, et cetera. And in closing, remember folks, it's always about justice, peace, and humility.